Thanks for the introduction. Good afternoon. Um, I'm uh, um, here today to uh, show you how you can uh, uh, better understand or even uh, predict your customer needs, how you can um, improve the quality of your products or increase your revenue or save costs for your company. And I'll show you how all these goals can be achieved by a better understanding of the knowledge that uh, you already have in your company. But currently, such knowledge is um, in the form of data or information distributed across a variety of um, uh, data silos in multiple databases, uh, in uh, piles of documents and procedures, and of course, in the mind of your employees. But in this way, it is totally use useless because uh, in order to access such knowledge and use it for uh, these purposes, you have uh, to do a mental shift from the classical approaches such as uh, data warehouse, business intelligence, and search engine to a new and proper organization of your uh, knowledge. In order to understand the, uh, the mental path necessary for such a shift, and recognize the value behind the knowledge that is providing your organization, it, we will consider a concrete scenario. We will start with a, a, a simple example, something that um, even though you are working on a different uh, uh, domain, it will resonate in your head because most probably you are dealing with or you are struggling with the same set of issues. So suppose that uh, you are the VP of products or the CEO of a manufacturing company producing uh, any type of goods, such as uh, cars, medicines, toys, whatever, and you would like to improve the quality of your product, make your customers happy, or uh, reduce uh, uh, the number of complaints that you are receiving, or you would like to optimize the production costs based uh, on the reduction of the issues that you have on your uh, production chain. So in this case, most probably, these are some of the questions that you are struggling with, that are keeping you awake uh, during the night. And these are just uh, some uh, uh, examples. But uh, the way in which uh, you will answer to them, the actions that you will take accordingly, will determine if your, your company will succeed or will, uh, will fail. But also, these are the kind of questions that you cannot answer using a, uh, looking at a, a pie chart in a dashboard or performing a, a search uh, query. You need uh, a knowledge framework from which you can distill insights and uh, use them to take the right actions in the right uh, uh, direction. In such case, where will you start? Where will you find all the information that you need to take uh, the right uh, uh, decisions? I'm pretty sure and uh, I'm sure uh, because this is true for all the companies of any size, from the guys uh, uh, selling a fruit on the street market uh, up to the multinational companies, that you are collecting data, actually a lot of data. And uh, I'm not referring uh, only to numerical data, such as uh, transactional data or purchase order, bills and whatever. I'm also referring uh, to uh, textual data, such as uh, emails, chat, uh, uh, shift notes, uh, uh, reviews from your users, or uh, uh, complaints from uh, uh, resellers. And uh, currently, uh, such uh, data, specifically unstructured data, is uh, uh, underutilized. This morning, uh, uh, His Excellency uh, Mohammed Hassan said that uh, currently we are using just the 2% of the unstructured data that we have. So how can this data be converted uh, in something that uh, concretely can help you to take uh, the right informed decision for, uh, for your company. Well, the, the path is described somehow in, uh, uh, in this uh, image. Maybe that some of you have seen it before in a different shape. Here I uh, projected it uh, uh, from the uh, data up to uh, wisdom and to simulation. But let's start the story from the beginning. Data by itself, in its natural format, it is totally useless because uh, it is sparse, distributed, it is uh, unstructured, so it is chaotic. In order to use data, you need to convert it in information at least, because information requires you to process data, to organize it. And uh, uh, this process produces information that is still not enough, because what you need is knowledge 
knowledge is connected information. And the, the conversion from information to knowledge is a, a quality change, but it's also uh, an art change. And currently, a lot of companies are dealing with or they are struggling with uh, this type of conversion because they recognize the value of the knowledge. Because insights and wisdom is, uh, are above knowledge. They I'm at, uh, recognize uh, meaningful information and connect such information. And by connecting information, they can provide guidance for you to uh, produce better product or to make your customers happy and so on and so forth. And in this uh, scenario, simulation allows you to project the knowledge that you have about your reality right now in the future, making uh, predictions or uh, consider several scenarios according to the decisions that you can take right now. But of course, this is a, a long journey, a hard journey that requires, first of all, the mental shift, requires uh, the right mindset, but of course requires also the right tools for uh, accomplishing all the tasks uh, and all the conversion necessary in this, uh, uh, in this journey. So let's consider some of the options that you could have and see why they are insufficient, and then we will see what is a, a third option that you can have. Most probably, one of the, common, the most common approach is uh, the, the data warehouse approach, in which you know data warehouse um, um, consolidate data uh, coming from a variety of data sources, mostly uh, numerical data, and uh, provide the foundation for these analytics uh, platforms called uh, business intelligence. But business intelligence provides tools uh, for recognizing and uh, uh, showing through this uh, dashboard, let's say, some um, uh, key performance indicator. So that, uh, Data Warehouse, suppose that uh, you should uh, look at, the, at this colored dashboard and have all the information that you need to take uh, informed decision. So take a moment and think, is this true? Of course, it's not, because uh, data uh, warehouse, uh, first of all, consider only numerical data, only transactions, bills, whatever, but not uh, uh, textual or unstructured data. So in this way, you are missing a part of the story, actually a great part uh, uh, of the story. Moreover, single events, once you are aggregate data, could be lost. Because imagine if you have a small events happening for a small amount of days, once you aggregate the data, these will be completely uh, invisible in the uh, data warehouse. And um, finally, KPIs and dashboards are hard to understand. Uh, it's even harder to correlate uh, KPIs. So it's, we can convey that uh, uh, this is not uh, an option because we are missing uh, a great part of the, of the story, that is the knowledge. Where is the knowledge in a, in a data warehouse system? We have uh, our data stored there, but uh, we cannot take uh, any important decision. We cannot answer to the question that we had uh, uh, before. And the same, more or less, is the, for the uh, search engine. You know, search engine um, um, allows you to uh, store data coming from uh, a real variety of data sources, even textual data, because it stores documents where um, you can store numbers, text, whatever you want. And uh, uh, in this way, you can actually store the world enterprise data in this uh, uh, structure that uh, seems to solve all the issues related to the data warehouse, because now, finally, you can store textual data. You can actually use this uh, uh, very flexible uh, document-based approach to store all the data that you have and uh, create these nice uh, uh, dashboards. But uh, again, documents in this uh, scenario are hard to be connected. So how can I connect, uh, for instance, a complaint with the production chain that produces the specific product for which uh, the user is complaining about? And uh, again, what you have back is uh, this uh, KPI-based approach, in which, as we mentioned before, it's very hard uh, to find a uh, correlation, to find common complex uh, patterns. But again, the big issue is that even in this uh, uh, approach, a big part, a big uh, uh, piece is, uh, uh, is missing. That is the knowledge. Again, where is the knowledge uh, in this bunch of documents uh, well organized uh, through which you should perform some search and get some, uh, uh, some information? They are useful. I mean, both data warehouse and, uh, uh, um, and search engines are useful. That They are fine, but then what? You need a, a mechanism that allows you to actually process your knowledge. And as we mentioned at the beginning, knowledge is connected data, is connected information. 
So the best approach that you have to store such knowledge is, of course, through a graph. But let's consider a scenario uh, in that sense. Suppose that uh, these two are some of the uh, complaints that you are receiving uh, about uh, your, your cars. So what you can do is uh, easily store this uh, uh, data in the uh, form of, um, of a graph in, uh, uh, in this way, for instance, because you can convert this into a node that represents the, the claim and connect it to the uh, product ID, uh, the specific product, and the seller ID. Then you can, uh, in theory, process uh, the, the, the claim itself and extract meaningful information. In this case, we can notice that uh, the, the recurring uh, keyword is that uh, there is this uh, window broken. In the, in the text. Then you can add uh, other information, for instance, from your production chain. And look, you can connect the specific product uh, with uh, uh, that is uh, uh, the, the object of the claim with, uh, with your production chain. Again, you can add uh, further information because you can uh, uh, take information about the seller um, and uh, connect it to the, uh, to the location. So we have that uh, one is in San Francisco and the other one is in Los Angeles. And then you can extend your knowledge with uh, some other knowledge base so you know that both are in California. And finally, you can get uh, the uh, supply chain information and again add uh, to your knowledge. So what you have at the end is a graph. It's a graph that contains the wall of enterprise data in this specific scenario. And uh, if you think again about uh, our scenarios, and uh, Specifically, some of the questions that we had, that was, for instance, uh, why my products are keep failing? So in this way, you can find an easy answer to that question, because you can notice that all your claims have uh, a common point, uh, that is this yellow uh, node, that is maybe uh, a provider that is providing a suspension that, for some reason, in the road of California, are causing too much stress on the windows of your car, and this is why they are keep broken. So in this way, with a simple graph that is uh, easy to, to read, you can find answer to your questions. That, uh, of course, this is the purpose of the, uh, of the knowledge. Because what you have back is not only a graph, it is actually a knowledge graph, where the wall of enterprise data, the wall of enterprise information is stored in the form of a knowledge that you can actually use. Because a knowledge graph is no more than a representational model that is able to store entities and uh, their attribute, and your entities can be people, can be cars, can be production chain element, and they can connect each of them. And uh, knowledge graph is a new asset for your company because this knowledge can be used for delivering new kind of services to your end user, and it is domain agnostic because uh, uh, it can be used by any kind of organization if you are uh, producing car, if you are building uh, um, uh, apartments, if you are renting houses, all these scenarios will fit very well in a very generic knowledge graph. And uh, this is why a lot of companies like uh, Microsoft, Yahoo, Facebook are uh, using, are creating their own knowledge graph on top of which they are delivering a new kind of services to their users. They are solving their issues because knowledge graphs provide you all the information necessary to answer the critical question for your company. Because um, first of all, they can store by nature um, connections among, uh, among entities. And uh, once you have this data in a, in a graph, every single node and every single relationship is an access point for your analysis. So you can uh, derive multiple access patterns. You can uh, derive uh, uh, commonalities in your, uh, in your graph. And uh, since you can store also contextual information, you can enrich your knowledge uh, using external knowledge. It is a real enabler, not only for the kind of analysis that we have seen that is based on, a, uh, let's say, on a human analysis, but also can be based on machine learning, can be based uh, on deep learning, can be based, of course, on uh, artificial uh, intelligence. So, and last but not least, uh, of course, you can deliver new type of visualization to your knowledge worker, to your, to your analysts because it offers the opportunity to visualize your data in a different way. That is not a, a KPI-based way. Of course, you can have, but this is not the case. You can uh, structure the data and visualize the data in the same way so that you, your analysts can go in deep into your issues and uh, find the real reason as we did before. And of course, you can do this uh, even through uh, machine learning. So supposing that uh, I convinced you, where would you start in this case? Because I'm not saying that uh, using a knowledge graph is simple because uh, Converting uh, data in information and then uh, 
into knowledge is not a simple task. It requires a lot of tools. It requires uh, a lot of uh, skills and knowledge uh, that span from natural language processing uh, to machine learning uh, to deep learning. So, in specifically, uh, you need uh, to extract the hidden structure from the text in order to process your data and your unstructured data in a proper way. You need uh, this mechanism, that is this uh, knowledge graph, to easily merge data coming from a variety of data sources, each with uh, its own schema. And uh, on top of this, you need uh, uh, a kind of framework that can help you to uh, perform different kind of, of analysis uh, on top of it, and as well as the proper visualization tools to help your knowledge workers to go in deep into your, uh, into your data. So you need uh, a platform, for instance, like, uh, like Hume, because Graphaware Hume uh, actually converts structured and unstructured data in a single connected source of truth, that is the knowledge graph, and deliver all the, uh, let's say, analytics necessary to extract, to distill insights from uh, the knowledge graph that uh, you have uh, uh, created so far. And uh, if we come back to our initial slide about the, the process of converting data into wisdom and deliver also simulation on top of this, uh, Hume is capable of uh, uh, providing features and tools that allows you to proceed step by step from data to information, from information to knowledge, and then extract insights uh, from it. So it delivers actually all the uh, skills and the tools necessary for performing this path in the, uh, in the best way, this journey in the uh, simplest and smoothest uh, way. So what I would like you to bring back home after this talk is uh, this important question, where you are evaluating uh, tools and platform for really taking a decision for your company, that is, where is the knowledge? Where can I... Um, convert my knowledge in something useful? How can I know what I really know about my uh, companies in order to take a decision? And as we have seen, it's not a simple journey because converting data in something that is really useful for you, that will help you to take informed decision, is not that simple. You need uh, the right mindset. You need uh, the right data model, like a knowledge graph, for instance, for storing the wall of your enterprise data in a single connected source of truth that represents uh, a new uh, asset for your, uh, for your company. And you need, of course, a tool or a set of tools that will help you to perform this journey in the right, uh, uh, in the right way. And Hume, in this sense, could help you to uh, somehow freeing yourself from the harness of uh, dealing with the details and focusing on what are the, your business goals, how you can bring your company to the, uh, to the next level. So, uh, thank you so much. Uh, it has been a pleasure talking to you today, and I'm very um, looking forward to continue this discussion later in this conference. Thank you. Thank you.